Well, another extraordinary day of twists and turns here in Westminster. I'm here all day with all the Brexit latest, but before that, the sport and the weather. <sighs> Jesus Christ, it's, it's like an episode of Don't Tell the Bride. It's some complete fucking bell end running around seven days before the big day, pissing his pants, not a fucking clue what he's doing, hasn't organised the car, the catering, the flowers. I thought I could come in on a jet ski. No. Are you sure about the jet ski? No. What about an aquatic personal watercraft? That's a fucking jet ski, Teresa. No one wants the jet ski. Shut up about the fucking jet ski. She's got one thing right, though. The UK has slid into a crisis, slowly and surely over ten painful years. And who got us here? This lot. This gaggle of obdurate, arrogant, stubborn, unrepentant, heartless bunch of self-serving arseholes who have spent the last three years trying to keep their useless, irrelevant political parties together while sleepwalking the country into a food blender. Every MP in that building should bow their head in shame. You know, I had more respect for this useless bunch of wankers during the expenses scandal. You know, at least that particular omni-fuck suggested uh, a modicum of ingenuity, a bit of fucking brain. At least someone in the country was getting something out of it, even if it was just a free fucking duck house. What a fucking shit fight. Yeah, exactly. How did this happen? D seriously? D d do you mean how did we end up with Brexit? That's like asking why is the moon there? Okay. All right, s simple answer. Simple answer, they broke the contract. OK, we, we are all obsessed in this country with your average Leave voter. That stereotype of an over-50, southern, gammon-faced male reader who wants to turn the UK into a neoliberal, deregulated paradise. But your, your average Leave voter explains nothing because they were always going to vote Leave no matter what. It's your marginal Leave voter that explains everything. 26% of UKIP voters in the 2015 election voted as a protest against the three main parties. You translate that sentiment to the referendum and boom! These are the people that saw their prospects go down the shitter who lost their job stability, who had to move house because of the bedroom tax, who suddenly saw no prospect of their kids going to university that had their disability benefits denied by some corporate box-ticking twat. We are in this mess because they broke the contract, the contract between a citizen and his government. A government's basic job is to extort money from the working people in the form of taxes. I'll have some of that, thank you very much, and we're fine with that, so long as the government redistributes that money wisely and fairly. Austerity broke the contract. When you make a conscious choice not to invest in education and at the same time massively rack up the private cost of further education, you break the contract. When you outsource the distribution of benefits to private companies whose main motivation is profit, you break the contract. When, when the private sector decides who deserves help and who doesn't, the government is essentially saying it can't do its job. It's given up on delivering. Housing? Fuck me! The entire UK economy is basically a massive laundry for Russian dirty money via the property market, which inflates prices so that most people can barely afford rent, let alone a deposit for a house. This would never happen in a country with reasonably functioning institutions with the well-being of its citizens at its heart. These are all massive public policy failures which has led to a breakdown of trust between the electorate and the government. You sprinkle a, a tiny bit of it's immigrants' fault and, and we pay the EU too much, it's going to resonate with the have-nots and the struggling. That's how populism works. It masks political failure by blaming others. We have a first-past-the-post democratic system that doesn't work, that disenfranchises massive swathes of the electorate. Four million people voted UKIP in 2015. They end up with one MP. That's not healthy for anyone. You live in a safe parliamentary seat. You don't have a say. Not really. 
And yet we're amazed when there's a vote that actually matters and the people vote for. Fuck you and you're better off in bullshit. I have to get my groceries from a food bank. They wanted to send a message. They did not want the status quo. And that's how you get Brexit. Brexit was sold to us as a panacea. In fact, it's the opposite. But Brexit has achieved one thing. Whilst Brexit won't solve any of our underlying problems, it has exposed them. Our constitution, our institutions, our democratic system and our politicians, they are not fit for purpose. If they don't deliver Brexit soon, they have failed at their jobs. But if they do, at this late stage, they will be knowingly and willingly fucking the country up the shit pipe. So either way, either way, Parliament's thin veneer of competency will finally be entirely worn away. This is the empire coming back to bite. Brexit is Pax Britannica coming home to roost. By taking back control, we have revealed to the world that our country is out of control. The UK chooses irrelevance. The UK chooses to give up its seat at the table. The geopolitical cost is immeasurable, not just because of Brexit, but because of this. This demonstration of our constitutional impotence. We're about to become a rogue state. We are about to become balkanised. Welcome to Great Britain, self-obsessed with its own importance whilst being fed for breakfast to any and all trading blocks who are feeling a bit peckish. Welcome to Great Britain, a middling economy with a power vacuum at its heart with no idea where to go next. It's going to be brutal. China, Japan, the US, they're all, all circling for their Brexit dividend. The UK has ceased to function, and to top it all off, we have a Prime Minister who's gone rogue. The Maybot has turned into Hal from 2001, and all passengers and crew are expendable. Strong and stable. Where's Guy Fawkes when you need him? You know, I, I voted Remain, OK? But I have always considered myself to be a bit of an EU sceptic. But now, I'm a UK sceptic. You know my overwhelming emotion? No, not anger. Sadness. It's so... it's so sad. <sighs> Thank you, John. Well, we could do with some better weather here, because it's all doom and gloom here in Westminster. Coming up, I spoke earlier with Amber Rudd, and we'll be...